Hey guys, so today I'm basically going to be doing a podcast on how to start a snow plowing business. Now, when I was starting out, I didn't really have anyone to ask questions to or, or pretty much learn anything about the business. So hopefully this video will answer some of your questions. And if you have any uh, questions at the end, you know, feel free to leave a comment. So prior to getting started here, I'd like to lay a rumor to rest. I'm sure that many of you have heard that snow plowing is easy money. That statement is completely inaccurate. In theory, it seems as simple as slapping a plow on your truck, dropping it down on the neighbor's driveway, and send them a bill, right? Getting paid big money? In the real world we live in, it's just not that simple. There are hundreds of aspects that are involved, but I'm only going to stick to some of the main concepts I find most important. Now, prior to me getting into all the aspects, it's important you understand what kind of person this business requires. This is not a job that you can call out of or just blow off. If you're sick, tired, or just don't feel like plowing, that's too bad. You still have to do the job. It takes a physically and mentally strong, level-headed individual. It's also important for you to keep in mind people are counting on you to keep their driveway clear and accessible. Imagine if their house was on fire and the fire truck couldn't make it up the driveway because you couldn't plow. The blame's on you. So again, understand the seriousness and responsibility of the job. Now we can get into the important aspects and go over each of them. I'll name them first, then we'll come back to them and go over them in detail. So, we have obviously our plow truck, our plow, commercial, residential, and insurance, contracts, how to charge, and finding clients. So to start with the plow truck. The plow truck is going to be key to your operation. You may ask what size truck do you need. For residential work, which I only recommend when starting out, a Jeep or F-150 or Ram 1500 will do you fine. You don't need an F-450 or an extremely heavy duty truck. However though, it must be a four wheel drive truck. You won't make it out of your driveway with a two wheel drive truck. Shorter the truck is more ideal for residential work because you can get into tighter spaces. With that being said, it's important to have a perfect mechanically maintained vehicle. I could also go much deeper into this topic, but I'll just say prior to every storm, you want to check your fluids, fuel up, make sure your transmission and clutch shift well. Uh, you want to make sure that you have good winter tires with proper air pressure, etc. You get the idea. With an improperly maintained truck, you're basically setting yourself up for failure. So again, make sure you have a solid truck. Now, we'll move on to the snow plow. Just as important as your plow truck, the snow plow is also key to your business. Considering that, this is why I highly recommend buying a new plow rather than used. Personally, I bought a western plow because of the quality, and they also offer a two-year warranty. There is also a dealer close by in case I ever need a part, so you know, right down the road, convenient. Something to think about. If you have a heavy-duty truck, you may also have the option of buying a V or winged snow plow. In my opinion, in my opinion you do not need a V plow for doing residential work, but it is the better choice because of the multiple configuration options. If you do plan to do large commercial lots in the future, a plow with wings will improve snow carrying capacity and operation efficiency. Now, we're going to get into commercial, residential, and insurance. I love people who tell me they are starting a commercial snow plowing business and they have never plowed before. It's like a beekeeper trying to become a welder overnight. With this industry, you need to learn to crawl before you can run. This is why I say you have to start small re with residential work before you have the knowledge, equipment, manpower, and skill to go full till. There's another point I want to throw into the mix as well. I mentioned earlier that when you're plowing, people count on you to be on top of the snow, meaning that you have to plow every storm, but commercial and residential are two totally different worlds when it comes to how immediately each must be serviced. Residential work, you can be slightly... Uh, lenient on time, meaning usually you can stop for a quick bite to eat or get a quick cup of coffee. But when it comes to commercial work, especially larger parking lots and malls and, and such, you have to be ready to go the second the first flake falls. If people can't open their business, do you not doing your job? 
Say goodbye to that contract. Hopefully you protected yourself and your contract from being sued. Okay, so enough about the commercial stuff and on to insurance. Obviously, to drive your truck on the road, you need auto insurance. That is a must. I also highly recommend liability insurance. This insurance should cover, um, depending on the terms, any accidental property damage that you may cause while plowing. Note that you may also need to change your auto insurance to a commercial or plow truck in order to be properly covered. And obviously, that's something you want to talk to your insurance company about. This is the proper and safe way to set up your business. That being said, you could also chance it and not go liability insurance. You save money in the short term, but if your truck slips on a you know, sheet of ice or you pick the wrong gear, you're really going to be paying for it. So again, it's highly recommended to be properly insured. Now, we're going to get into contracts. Contracts are another big one. The purpose of a contract is an agreement between the plow company and the client that should identify several things. Here are some of the basics. Price to be charged, where to pile the snow, where to be cleared, the minimal amount of snow that needs to fall in order for you to come out, additional services and costs when payment is due. And those are just a couple, but you know they could go on. A proper contract should be drafted by a lawyer, but there are many templates available online plow sites. I also want to note, prior to using contracts, sometimes I found it difficult to get paid. But with the protection of a contract, the second you mention lawyer or lawsuit to a client, it speeds up the payment quite rapidly. But also it's important to have a heart, say if it's someone struggling to pay their bills or a bet or something along these lines, you know, you want to have a heart. You don't want to be the asshole. You want to be a nice guy. Now how to charge. Now on to likely the most popular question asked by people new to the industry is how much should I charge? And that answer depends. But to start, let's go over two billing types. There are people who prefer to charge one price for the season, and then there are those who charge by the storm. Personally, I've always charged by the storm, so I can't speak on charging for the season. And I charge based on the amount of snow that falls in a 24-hour period, also something that you want to mention in your contract. So my system is set up like this. So say for a two-car wide and four-car long driveway, I would charge $40 for two to six inches. If it snows six to 12 inches, I would charge time and a half of the base price. So time and a half of 40 would move the price along to 60. And then if it snows 12 to 18 inches, it doubles the base price. So 40 times two goes to 80. Each additional inch over 18 inches, I charge an additional uh, $15. And that's a little bit more than what I would charge per inch, everything under that. And the reason is because once you have that much snow, it takes a little bit of extra effort to pile the snow further back and higher. And you, you, you're basically spending more time there and it, it's more work. So you got to charge a little bit more. And then also I would charge uh, generally five bucks to shovel a short walk and then 15 bucks for every bag of salt I spread. This is just an example, but you know, you're personally going to need to determine your run cost per hour and determine what you need to charge in order to be profitable. Also note that not all clients want salt or shoveling, but it's your job to sell it to them and in return make some more money. Now here comes the tricky part, finding clients. Do not expect to make money your first year because finding clients can be very difficult. I started out when I was 8 years old plowing my driveway with a Kubota BX24 tractor and my neighbor saw how good of a job I did and offered me his driveway. And at the end of the year I had the other three driveways next to it. I know that is likely not the case for most of you but there is a lesson to be learned here. Consistent and quality work speaks loudly. Though I was just a kid, the quality of my work led my neighbors to share my name and number by word of mouth. And in my opinion, that is the best way to get your name out. But there are other ways to advertise as well. You can make a Facebook page and share it, tell your friends and family, put an ad in the paper, you get the idea. But again, I find word of mouth is the most powerful. In fact, you can also have your clients do the work by offering discounts for every new client that you receive. 
So in conclusion, I hope this video helps you to better understand the snowplow industry and the type of person it takes. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below, and I'd really appreciate a thumbs up if you like this video. Thanks for watching.